Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just feel like goodbye. Hello, everyone. I guess tonight is um middle of 2000s night because this is another night of October Horror Fest. Very few people probably know, but this is the only returnee for this year. What movie could be returning from the best previous years? This was a movie that I missed on the very first year of October Horror Fest in 2014. Now I know why I possibly missed it. Because we watched the 2004 or 2005 of the Amityville Horror, a.k.a. the one with Ryan Reynolds in it. I gotta say, that... See, I haven't seen that many Amityville Horror movies. I haven't even seen the original. This is one film that... It's trash. There's no, there's no nice way of putting it. This film is trash. Like... I feel bad that this is Chloe's, like, filming debut. I want to say the only cool thing that I liked about this film was not even anything in the movie itself. It was the fact that Ryan Reynolds, like, method acted in this film to where he literally isolated himself from the kids to where, like, you would get that genuine factor of the kids being uncomfortable around him. Which, that's a good tactic to do for a film like this. But the dialogue, the story, the remake story, the CGI, the acting. Ryan Reynolds looked like he literally jumped out of Blade Trinity and jumped straight into this film and still looks like a vampire. I have nothing else better to say about this film. The, the uh, statistics and the ratings and the budget and the box office will come from Krieger in probably less than 30 seconds. This gets this film gets a three out of ten. Gets a three because I give Ryan props for actually method acting. But that's it. So here we are, another night of us watching Dead. <laughs> we had to decide between watching which one to watch. Either 1997 version or this version. I had mistakenly chosen this version, and about f ten minutes into the movie, I remember watching this back from 2014. And I remember wanting to put a screwdriver through my eye. I hated this film, and I didn't remember I hated it until after I started it. I thought this was going to be a brand new story to me, and that this was going to be beautiful, and a movie I haven't seen, and I was going to be excited. That's why I played it first, because I thought it was going to be good. No. The budget for this film was $19 million. Where the fuck was that $19 million at? Casting. Ryan Reynolds probably got paid $10 million for this film. <laughs> the other $9 million they used for the rest of the cast. And I don't know what the fuck they did with the rest for the CGI, because that was some free shit. They did make money from this movie. Box office hit at $108 million. So they made some money. Not as much as Resident Evil, but they, they, were, they were here for it. The audience rates this a, a 5.2. I almost said 9 for a second. Oh. Um... And the critics rate this as a 2.3. Oh, oh, oh. The first thing I liked was whenever they referenced E.T. Uh, not E.T. It. it. When they referenced It with the red balloon. They also referenced a uh, a good anime called Pokemon by having by having it say catch them all. Catch them. Because you had to catch them all and kill them. The only actual thing that was serious about this film that they produced well that I liked was after he killed the dog, his hands was, were shaking. And then slowly over time, even though he was possessed, he was like, his hands weren't shaking anymore. It was like the human side of him was dying. Now, this film was filled with cheap jump scares. 40% of this film was cheap jump scares. Like that. I also disliked Ryan Reynolds as a cast for this. He cost too much money because he's too fucking famous even at this time for a film like this um and he's a comedic actor not a shining type character so that was bad for me whenever they first entered the house i had a problem this guy said that he works in construction even though i didn't see him go to a single drop site the entire time he was there um he didn't own a hard hat 
that I saw anywhere or had any re- resemblance of of somebody who would work in construction. When they first walked in, they looked on the ceiling. You know, the lady was going through there, and up in the corner there was a tremendous amount of mold that was there that was black mold. And they were just like, this house is a steal. It's like, do you have any idea how much money it's going to cost to replace this mold? You don't even know where it's at. You don't know the source problem. Hill House had this problem, too, and they said, fuck, we're fucked if we have any mold in here. Because you got to tear everything out and replace it. Everything. And maybe the plumbing. You have to rewrite the entire plumbing for the house. So this place was not remotely a steal. I disliked the decaying mine thing. That was stupid, especially once they started to, like, leave and he was out in the water for 30 seconds and he was fine but he wasn't fine when they went to the restaurant for a whole afternoon he came back and he started getting worse um the pacing for this film was really bad it felt rushed to where he was crazy it was like 10 minutes in he's like ah fuck you you stupid fat kid fucking billy fuck you billy the mom picked this extremely hot babysitter who also is a whore pedophile and she used to be the babysitter in the previous house seems a little questionable um no interview nothing just sit down and she wears a tube top and they're immediately like yeah that's fine that's cool i'm okay with that uh the fucking deadpan look there was a scene in the movie where they they were revealing that the uh doll was buried with the kid and then it just zoomed into both their faces like, <gasps> like the stupid ass game that we played that was awful at one point when they're on the roof they had T2000 music, which was equally as bad. Okay, so Mike kind of touched upon the thing about how he stayed distant with the kids. Um, so he stayed distant with the kids to to make it where they weren't too comfortable around him, and they actually said on set, they're like, oh, I don't think Ryan likes us kind of thing. A big reason he did that, not only for the obvious, also he said that he didn't want to um, have an issue with abusing the children because if he got too emotionally attached to them, then he would have had an issue doing that. Shows that he's a nice guy. Random little factoid, because there was a lot of things in production that fucked with this. Uh, just right as they started shooting, a random fisherman, dead body, appeared on the shore, real life. He had drowned, washed up on shore. A couple people from the original family also died during the production of the film, which they, which they thought was eerie as well. So the little girl that was her debut acting... Um, she did a lot that you'd assume a little eight-year-old would have a stunt double for. She had no stunt double at all. She demanded that she did her own stunts at eight. So climbing on the roof, almost falling, all of that. Another thing that was a production issue, because uh, people were feeling on set when the cameras weren't rolling, the actors were saying that they felt like an eerie presence and that they were scared a lot. Um, and then... Throughout the filming process, both the producers, the film, the director, actors, all said that they, that on and off they would wake up at 3.15 in the morning out of nowhere um, regularly. So this film was actually produced by MGM, which is a production company. This was MGM's last um, independent film that they made on their own with their own funding. A- after this film, there was a whole bunch of transfers, but essentially they were bought out by Sony. This was the, the last nail in their coffin because they picked a director who only did music videos and their backup director that turned them down also only did music videos. And then my favorite thing is they had a direct reference to Lord of the Rings that was popular at this time. The third ghost in the basement after he goes into the torture chamber is the ghost of Smeagol. He had his own little tunic and the, the strandy hair and he was hunched over. He almost said, my precious. This actually has a coveted spot on my list. It's, it's, a, it's a spot that very few movies get me to put it on there. I'm giving this film a 1 out of 10. The comment I made earlier about him looking like a vampire because he has the same look as Blade Trinity. I thought about it for a little bit, and with Blade Trinity coming out in 2003, and this film coming out in 2005... It's so close together to where I kind of feel like that he went from Trinity to Blade. He went from Blade Trinity to this film, like back to back. I don't know why Ryan 
Looks like a vampire with a beard on. It just, he looks like a vampire. I completely disagree with you, and he was trying to model himself after the original guy. Yeah, he was. I mean, but do you understand how, like, he had the same look as he did in Trinity versus this film? He had the beard and everything, because how close they were together. How, like, filming and process and whatnot. I would have had to have seen Trinity. You haven't seen Blade Trinity? I haven't watched any Blades. Well, that's a project down the road. I think we got all of our points across. <sighs> One. Shame. 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 All right, everybody. We are here for the second part of October Horror Fest um, mid 2000s movies. Michael will be reviewing after me, and I will be starting off. And also, um. J Jacoby is here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go over the numbers first before I talk about the things I'd like to talk about with this film. First of all, this m movie had a budget of $16 million. Um, and they made $51.8 million. The critics put it at a 1.4. <laughs> and the audience put it at a 5.3. So to answer the the question that I heard Mike mumbling a second ago about why there was not a sequel. The directors of this film that were assigned for this film that made this independently that just had a framework they had to do said that they did not want to do another another film for this. Um, I, I'd like to say that it's probably because they didn't make a whole lot of money. They made a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, but fans and family and everyone wanted them to make another one and they refused to do it. So that's why this died off and the whole se the whole thing was... They just refused? was fuck. Yes, they just didn't want to continue the project. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry to interrupt here. I'm sorry to interrupt, but but, but the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 and the 2006 Texan Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre are the only good two Texas Chainsaw films in the entire anthology of the existence of the Texas Chainsaw franchise. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Every other film is either okay, mediocre, or just god-awful. What the fuck is wrong with you? That was a mic check brought to you by Mike, Mike, Ch Mike Check Productions, and Jacoby is also upset. The sex scene that was opening in the movie where she has the disinterested dude tied down was overly aggressive. Whenever they pulled up to the house and they're like, hey, is this a police station? He said, no, it's Mama's house. <laughs> I thought that was a little cringy. Um, and then the first half of the movie didn't even have Leatherface in it other than, like, a, a couple scenes. Like, primarily, the first half of the movie really didn't have Leatherface in it. And that's, like, if I'm really thinking about things that take away from this movie, it's that one for me. The opening scene was good. I enjoyed the cop, the way he talked, the speech, how unsettling he was. Leatherface was cool. I really loved whenever they got in the motorcycle incident, and the and then the cop just comes out and just says, "Oh, I just bet you are." <laughs> Not even really aiming, just at his waist and just like he didn't give a shit. Um, at this point, he just didn't give a fuck, and he was just killing whoever he saw. The cop's dialogue was really good. Beautiful bastard. <laughs> like whenever they're like hey why are you putting this body in the front seat with me and he was like well would you want me to put your mama in the trunk if this was her no i'm treating her with some respect whenever she was hiding under the car and and the dude was pissing and he was just like come on baby i know you got more in there whenever the chick was in the truck and she was trying to get hooked away i mean she was trying to get away and he just fucking hooked her out <laughs> that the that was cool the bear trap is like classic um, and the gore in this film is really good. Uh, the the bear trap and the saran wrap over the face and then him cutting in to let him out. That shit stuck with me as a kid and made me terribly uncomfortable and scared of this film. Really bad. Him nailing down the cuffs on both sides was really smart and cool. All the chainsaw kills, the face swap was good. The even him up thing was really funny. Look at that now, Tommy, that's goddamn sloppy. That'll get infected. Even him up. Doesn't make any fucking sense why he would do that, but he still did it, so. He's all about symmetry in his life. And then the um, set her free son thing at, the, at dinner 
article from the old lady. That was that was a good touch. Now I do have nine facts that were interesting that I will elaborate on now. They have a cow that's hit by a Jeep as a distraction. The cow then blows, pretty much blows and splatters all over, all over the place. The cow was not a real cow. It was made out of fiberglass, um, and they added fake blood, guts, and bones to make it look realistic. If you recall the cell phone wire and the shrink wrap scenes um, while they were torturing them, that wasn't fake. They didn't do a stunt double that wasn't real. They did the actual actors with actual shrink wrap covering their face to where they couldn't breathe. Um, they were really concerned for them during the filming of that scene, and they actually left a little slit at the bottom to try and help breathe, but they said that that really didn't make any kind of difference whatsoever. The signal that he would use whenever it was getting too, too much and he needed a break is he would beat his knees together because they were off camera. That way they could still use the shots. The chainsaw that Leatherface carried around was exactly 35 pounds. Kind of gives you an idea of how strong, he, strong or weak he might be. This was actually cool. So, as you know, um, some things can't be released in theaters if they're above a certain rating. Rated R is pretty much the most they're going to play. NC-17 is above that. Um, so, at first they got an NC-17 rating, and they had to edit some things down to make this film where they would allow them to release it in theaters. Um, they actually had to edit down 17 scenes to get it out of NC-17, because they were too gruesome for theaters. This was the first one from Iceland to get an 18 rated they, they usually don't do that in Iceland. They're really lenient about stuff, and they're just like, this this movie's fucked up. New Line paid $3 million extra dollars out of budget expected for the rights because the people who had the rights were trying to get, uh, were, were trying to fight for the rights back mid-production, which would have been a huge waste of this film. I f thought that was interesting. Dean actually has a blood stain that matched the van from the original movie. The body count in this movie was 12 if you count the cow. If you don't count the cow, then it was 11. They actually released alternate endings for this film. There were three alternate endings from this. This was known as the theatrical uh, release. Um, in the ending, um, instead of uh, instead of Leatherface being in the back of the car, he actually saws through the window instead in one version. Um, another version is where he is in the back seat, but instead of using the chainsaw, he, take, he, he jabs a knife and puts it through her chest. And then the third one is is a, a version where they did no subtitle. They, they, the narrator that talked at the end did not talk in that version. My very last little tidbit of information about this is the chick who played Bailey, the blonde lady. She was rated number four for the best boobs in, in, in the top ten list for best horror boobs of all time per IMDb. I'm going to rate this on my ratings. This is going to be a higher one that some people might disagree with, as well as critics would think. Um, I feel like this film is really great, and really great on my list puts it at a solid 9. That is like the opposite of the first movie we watched tonight, because I rated that a 1, and this one's a 9. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect film, but it's a very good film, and it gets really close to it, and this is like one of my favorite movies when you, of all time. So even if it's not a blockbuster some of the dialogues hit or miss it just makes me feel really uncomfortable um it's it, it makes me feel the feeling that you want when you watch a horror movie even now when i've watched so many and i'm like i'm 26 now so like i've i'm not really super phased by most horror movies and i w i didn't feel scared here but i i remembered the feelings of being scared of the sheriff kind of being like adults like i would feel like if i messed up that's how adults are going to talk to me so that gave me really anxiety in like everyday life just from watching this film so uh it did an excellent job in my opinion i let um krieger go first in this film because he saw more than i did because i did go in and out of the bathroom quite a bit because not gonna lie i had a few drinks because the last film was actually god awful i want to say that this film because i've seen the 2003 uh remake and I've seen, if not have heard, or if not have seen bits of every single other Texas Chainsaw film. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 and Texas Chainsaw The Beginning are probably the strongest two of the entire franchise. Which is why I question why they didn't make any more. Comparing this film to... Uh, what? Uh, Bah. Comparing this film to 2003, which we viewed it 
two years ago, which I'm pretty sure it's still on the channel. Um, my thing is that it's not weak. The beginning is not weak at all. If not, it's at the same level as 2003. It's kind of like... An origin story of too much. If that makes sense. It's good. It's actually fucking great. It's like they had to give an origin story to every little detail in this film. Does that make sense? I mean, that's my only nitpick. Is that... They had to tell why um, the dude had to. The dude became a sheriff, or why did he lose his? Why does he have a pair of dentures, or why did that one guy happen to lose his legs, or why did this person become that, or why did this become this? I mean, it's just like I mean, it's not anything too big to gripe about. It's kind of like, did we really need every little detail in one movie that could have been expanded and like? Oh, I don't know. Maybe two or three movies? But besides that, Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. I'm not a fan of this franchise at all. The entire franchise is a... Probably... If you think Friday the 13th is probably the roughest franchise to go through, you are sadly mistaken. Because the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, every single film, reboot, remake, and new continuity included is the roughest franchise to go through but this film alone i'd have to go for a seven because yes it's a sequel explaining about all the events and every single little detail of the 2003 texas chainsaw massacre but it's not a bad film these two movies of the Texas Chainsaw franchise are the strongest, and I do enjoy them the most. Would I watch it again? As a double feature with this film and the 03 film? Yeah, I'd watch it again. That is my thoughts on Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. This is Mike Check 95 along with Jacoby. And Krieger Margin 1 over there, or should I say O one. one And we're signing out, and we'll see you the next time. Always ask the questions. Why not? And who with? And? Don't be a If in Texas, and you find a cop who happens to shoot a motorcyclist who's trying to rob you, don't think he's helped.